Yo, yo, yo. <clears throat> Hello, folks. This is Brad, aka Zis, or Jawbox from Lagwar.com, and today I'm going to take through a little run through of Guild Wars 2 and what I've been doing in the game. Uh, so you can see I'm in the overflow of Divinity's Reach. Uh, I guess boys will be what I'll show you is I'll go ahead and uh, My feet hurt. I've got this story quest to do, the big protest too much. Uh, so I guess I'll go ahead and do that one and kind of show you my character and how it's coming along so far. Well, I don't know why I'm walking. I'm still not used to the waypoint thing. Which is really nice, by the way. I was actually in a world, uh, world be world earlier today, and people were, some of the people in there were kind of saying, ah, they wish they had mounts and this and that. But I mean, with the way you can fast travel with waypoints, uh, in most cases, you really don't need a mount. But it would still be nice. Mounts are always nice. Okay. Let's see where we're at now. Back in another overflow. Here we go. Need to get down to here, which is by a skill point challenge. So I've been in Queensdale, which I'm actually playing in Azura. So start out in a, a different zone, like Metrica Province, Rausum, and once I hit around level 20, 22 or 23, I wasn't high enough level to continue with the story quests at the time, so I just went ahead and figured what the hell, I'll go ahead and uh, head over to Divinity's Reach and mess around in the human zones, kind of look around, see some of the other zones, and man, it is beautiful over here. It's just absolutely beautiful. Um, and I got to do a lot of the quests that I missed out on. Uh, well, didn't really miss out on I've just been doing the quests in my, you know, home zones. Um, but I'm glad that it came over here, so I've kind of gone back through each of the zones, and trying to catch up, you know, I want to do all of them, which is kind of the point of the game, you know, it tracks everything, like the whole game is an achievement, uh, between the waypoints and the points of interest and all this stuff, it's just like, oh, I want to get everything, so, uh, the Lion Guards strive to protect the trade I came over here, and, from Lions and I've been doing those, and tough, the neat thing about that is, you know, thin. unlike other MMOs, Banded where holdings are quickly growing throughout the wilderness skip of one Black zone and go on and, and I fear know, things will only get worse zones. if someone uh, doesn't step in. When you come in. back to those zones, you can't necessarily do all the quests uh, to your benefit because now you're too high level and you're not going to get any experience. The beauty of Guild Wars 2 is it scales your level to whatever zone you're in. Um, like in my case, I'm in, if you look at the bottom left hand of the screen, I'm level 27, but it's got me scaled down to a level 16, uh, because that's more appropriate for the mobs that I'm fighting. Which, it's really cool because, you know, like I got a couple friends that are, I've been playing with, uh, real life friends, and we don't always get to play at the same time, and I've actually took off work a few days so I can play non-stop. Uh, so even though I've kind of passed them up in level, it doesn't really matter because when they come back, you know, we'll go, I'll go to their zone or we'll do whatever and, you know, it'll leave it. We'll be the same level again based on whatever zone we're in. Uh, my apologies for sucking in that fight right there. That was pretty pathetic. So anyway, as you can see, um, I'm playing an engineer class, <coughs> an Azura engineer, and I mean, I'm really, really loving it. I read a lot of different things about the engineer and how they're very dynamic in regards to play and, you know, I guess it's arguable that they may be one of the 
tougher classes to really master because there's just so much so many different ways to play this class. I mean, they have so oh, many skills like all the others, but then on top of that, they also get the tool belt and uh, all these different kits that they can equip. So right now I've got the flamethrower equipped, and if I activate that, it changes my entire toolbar to flamethrower abilities. And I can flip back and, you know, there's a couple different things like that that I can equip. There's the bomb kit, does the same thing. You know, if I activate the, whoop, that was flamethrower. If I activate the bomb kit, now it brings up all these different bomb abilities. So, you know, there's a, a lot of different stuff. It's really what I like about it is that there's not necessarily one or even two or three ways to play this class, which I'm sure a lot of them are like that. Probably all of them. But um, it just really suits me. And so far I'm really digging it. I even have my engineering shirt on. So, yeah. Try to make my way down here. That's a long haul. But we'll get there. So with the auction or the trading post, I think is Nope, it's up. Holy crap, the trading post is up. <laughs> it's been down like intermittently up and down uh, for the last few days. Uh, I guess just the influx of players, arena nets, trying to, you know, keep everything as stable as possible. So they've been working on the trading post, trying to get things balanced out there so it doesn't continuously crash or cause other parts of the game to crash due to the load on those servers. Uh, I haven't really bought anything out of the, um, the black Lion Trading Company. Um, I think I did buy some gems. I think I spent ten dollars on gems, and the main purpose of that was just to get some extra storage space in my bank. Because to start out with, I think you only get what was it, maybe thirty, thirty slots and thirty bank slots. Um, but the you could buy more for like six hundred gems, which is around five bucks. You can get 30 Peace more, so I went ahead and bought for. 30 more. And I don't foresee myself spending a whole lot of money on things like that. Um, it's just more of a convenience. And aside from the keys, you know, you get these little... I don't think I have any in my inventory, but you get these little boxes that drop. They're locked. It's like a chest, and you can pick it up. And if you get one of these keys, these Black Lion keys, then you could use that to unlock the box and you get some neat, pretty cool stuff out of it. Um, I've gotten some XP boosters, some instant repair canisters, um, transformation, uh, if I can find one. I don't know where it's at, but anyway, it's like a transformation thing to where I can take any piece of armor and transfer or combine the looks of one item with the stats of another item and make them one item. So, that, I mean, really neat stuff. So far, I mean, I'm just so happy with this game. It launched with so much stuff that, you know, it takes most games years to get, or if they ever get it. So, I mean, I'm still pretty low levels. So we'll see once I get to end game. But if it's anything like the first Guild Wars, I mean, I'm pretty sure I'm going to love it. <sighs> this is... The Q again for that. There's an undiscovered vista. Oh man, I should have. Tell you what, I'm gonna start back over again up here. I haven't discovered much of this area yet. It only has, you can see, six out of eighteen waypoints. So. Um, Travel is kind of I'm kind of gimped on travel right now. How about you? I really want to get over here and do the story quest because uh, I kind of gotten behind on the story stuff because I've been doing so much world versus world 
and trying to go through and do all the little events and uh, over here in Queensdale, which between the static events, you know, the helping all the people out, the little hearts, between that and the dynamic world events, it's pretty crazy. You can just stay so busy and really get caught up in the world. I apologize for having a video oh, of just I can't wait to explore this. The Seraph are all that stands between walk. order and chaos out here. Even now, the Harathi are gathering materials to construct great siege engines, which lay waste to everything within range. Please, stand with us, and put a stop to their plans. Already. Yeah, the little, uh... I like these two, the skill points that you can unlock. They're just spread out across the world. Some of them are little challenges that you do. Um, some of them are, you know, fight this guy and beat him and you get a skill point. And other ones are just this big glowing energy beam. And if you interact with it, then um, you get a skill point. So I did a bunch of those earlier today. And now I've got like 21 unspent skill points that I really need to spend. But... I haven't decided yet what direction I want to take them, so may deal with that later tonight. <clears throat> uh oh, crap. Whoa. I'm not used to playing with my frame rate, kind of, because I'm recording this, my frame rates drop down to like 40 frames per second. And it's kind of messing with me. I'm not really used to that. This so I appear like a complete noob in combat, I apologize. <laughs> Where in the hell? It's got a road there. I'm trying to find the road. Um, anyway, so aside from all the different little kits and things like that, I've also got some uh, turrets, which, you know, my little healing turret I can throw down. Earlier on, I was using the turrets quite a bit more. I was really big into the the net turret and uh, well, the rifle well. turret. Because they really are handy. I mean, they're not only for the you know, supplemental DPS, but also for the aggro versus. I mean, there's times where those things can pull the aggro off of me and uh, really be a lifesaver. So. Uh, Everything, you know, that I've noticed, and it's probably this way with all of the other classes as well. And, I mean, some people may say, oh, well, that's with anything. But, I mean, I think more so in this game than any other Fascinating. MMO I've played in a long time. So, I mean, your skills are very circumstantial. Like, turrets are really good in this case, and, you know... Uh, Mines, landmines, or the bomb kit are really good in this scenario, and shields are good in this scenario. It's like there's so many different scenarios and circumstances, and you have an ability to counter each of those. Um, it, it's really neat. It makes combat very interesting, and you're constantly wanting to flip your skills around and try different things, experimenting so that when you do come upon a particular scenario, you know whether or not you're, you're geared properly for it, so you can swap those skills in and out. Which is really neat, you know, as long as you're not in combat, you can come down here on the, you know, like the 6, 7, 8, 9, and just, you know, flip it out with any of the other skills that you've actually unlocked, which I think these are my uh, tool belt skills. This one's for an elite skill, but I haven't unlocked any of those yet. You unlock those in 30. So, not too far away. Oh, we're getting close. More people should learn the Holy shit. Don't want to fall off of that. Yeah. 
I mean, overall, I haven't really had any problems. Hey, it's been a great that. launch for me. I know some people have had problems logging in or their accounts got hacked. It totally sucks. Um, but I haven't really had any issues practically at all. So, uh, fortunately, it's, it's been really, really good. I've got a lot of play time. Just got you a skill that, point. Workers? That's how you do it. Yeah, so that was one of those little skill challenge things, like you know, here where beat this dude's minion and you get a skill point. Uh, they're not repeatable. You can only do it once. So basically, you just when you come along, those do them. And the neat thing is, even in the world v world maps, those are in there as well, along with waypoints and points of interest to discover. I got some really good loot earlier today for discovering 100% of Tarnished Coast uh, Borderlands. It's really neat. So where the hell is this? Maybe it's up there? It says that this quest thing is right here, but it's not. Maybe I gotta figure out how to get up there. Oh, right. But I think ArenaNet did a great job with the art style. Um, it's stylized perfectly, and all of the environments just look so lush. The trees and the colors are very vibrant. It's just great. There are little quirks. I mean, I've, I have noticed some clipping and things like that with armor, but nothing really, you know, not a I've huge seen the deal. Wizard's Tower. What else is there to do around here? That's pretty much it. Oh. So, here we go. I am like a shadow. This is the Arcane Eye's hidden safe house. Gore is almost certainly inside. It looks formidable. Getting us in and getting him out will be problematic. How should we play this? Can you see that? By raising a ruckus. If we wave banners and shout Gore's name at the top of our lungs, the Arcane Eye will pounce. They'll drag us in and lock us up until we cool off and agree not to make any more mischief. Here's a banner. Wave it around, make some noise, and let's get ourselves arrested. We'll show the Arcane Eye what real spy masters are like. I'm 
I've lost visual acuity. Oh, crap. To get apprehended. Whoa. Make it look natural, Savant. Had it not scoff law. Good. Now come ah. with us. You're <laughs> That's under arrest. Gonna get killed. About time, Flatfoot. I mean, we won't be silenced. You can't lock up the truth. I don't know who you are, but thank the alchemy you've come. I'm completely innocent. We know. We're here to rescue you. Ah, uh, then. There's my little guy. You were. Methodology is unsound. You're locked up in here too. All part of the plan. No cell can hold me. Now stand back and prepare to be impressed. There's our egress. Let's move. It's a breakout. Those woolly heads have lost visual acuity. Whoa. must control the game. Okay, how did you get those doors open? I was watching closely and I still didn't catch it. Trade secret. Available only to those who sign on with the Order of Whispers full time. But I will say this. Choose the locks you pick very carefully. Can I interrupt? I, I don't want to give the impression that I'm ungrateful, but I, I can't thank you for saving me until I'm actually safe. Point taken. Uh, time to go, Savant. I'll take Gore back via the scenic route, so we're not followed. That's standard Order of Whispers procedure. We'll rendezvous with you and Zoja and the other Orders and proceed from there. See you then. So, that kind of gives you an idea of how the story missions are. Um, you know, you do a part, go do another part, and it just kind of takes you along on your story. Now, the this particular one, this is the only character that I've really played this far, so I don't have any idea what you know the stories for the other guys are. Um, but at any rate, I mean it's nice, you know. The thing I've I've kind of figured out: if you're only gonna go through and do the story quests and the little, you know, help missions where you come along and uh, do these and get the uh, the favor, you're probably you're probably gonna burn yourself out of content 
before you're high enough level to move into you know the next zone or whatever um, and that may not be the case for everybody but I know that was the case for me early on and um, once I actually start doing you know mixing in some crafting some gathering uh, to sup provide supplemental experience you know now I don't have any problems at all I'm actually higher level than you know the zones that I'm doing and I think that's probably the way it was, you know, I guess Arena Net had that in mind. Um, and it's easy to do the crafting, or the, the gathering. You know, you get your uh, the harvesting sickle, an axe, and a mining pick. And that's all you need to start gathering. Uh, the nodes show up on your map, run around, harvest stuff, and, you know, get experience for it. Like right here, here's a tree. And I've got an axe equipped, so just go up, chop that bitch down. And look how much experience you get. So over time, and you know, and some things even give you more experience than that. 16's not much, but you know, I've noticed some of them that give 32 a tick. So over time, it really does add up. And uh, it's an easy way of doing it, even if you have no interest in crafting whatsoever. That's a really good way to make some extra cash if the trading post is working and also give you some supplemental experience. And it really does make a difference. I mean, I know I've done quite a few levels uh, here in the 20s just by gathering and crafting alone, nothing else. So it's worked out really well. So let's. Let me see if we can do the skill point challenge. Ooh, there's an event going on. If I can get over to it. Yeah. Centaur mob boss has popped up and you know, this guy's captains with him and everybody must group together and kill him now. Uh, there's all kinds of this stuff going on non-stop so I mean so far anyway almost 30 levels into it it, it hasn't got old yet. Um, some of the fights are a bit of a zerg but I'm not sure if that's because of the fight itself or if it's just because there's so many people 
in the zones right now currently leveling that when you're doing these events there's like you know 50 60 people on at one time doing it so maybe it feels like a zerg because of that uh, maybe six months from now it won't necessarily feel that way there won't be as many people so you can actually kick back and focus on the, the strategy more so than what you can right now so this is one of those vistas uh, you can see on my map here it says undiscovered vista and I'm assuming it's on top of this building right here so what I'm gonna do I'm guessing I get there by going this way so I'm jump look out over the world here now that looks badass that is so awesome um, get up here Still got a little ways to go. I'm assuming we we'll jump here, jump there, and we're up. Almost. Now we're up here. And this is what it looks like when you discover a vista. Kind of reminds me of Assassin's Creed. Except I can't do a leap of faith and live afterward. Yeah, the art direction is so awesome in this game, and the art style just rocks. Okay, let's jump back down. figure out where we're going to go next. I already got that waypoint. Uh, I think I was going to come over here. Let's kind of do one of these skill challenges. Yeah, let's try one. Probably the last thing that I do in this particular video but I'm going to keep doing live streams. I know this one was pre-recorded, but I uh, wanted to post this one with an article or a little blog that I wrote right on the website. But I'm going to start doing the live streams more often. I think I've only done one so far for Guild Wars, and I think one for DayZ. But uh, I think I'm going to start doing them like every Tuesday and Saturday or something and see how it goes. Maybe I can get a uh, couple real life friends or even uh, online friends to up and make a fun little ditty out of it. Let's see, wait. Yeah, let's do this one. Probably be easier to get to. Oh, so you can actually salvage things. Um, like for white items, I've been using just a basic salvage kit. You know, it breaks them down into crafting materials, like it just turned that piece of hide into uh, some leather sections. Uh, this one, same thing, it's a salvage item, so go ahead and use it. It turned it into a rawhide leather section. So, uh, refreshing. You come across quite a bit of stuff like that. And like I said, even if you're not into crafting, just the gathering alone can do you a lot of good. Okay, so the skill challenge is down there. Oh, just... Oh. Oh. Feedback loop initiated! <laughs> I so was just the kite.
Alright, so anyway, that's how the skill challenges work. And there's a copper node. Oh, one neat thing about harvesting is, see all these people hitting this copper node? I can pop right in and do it too. It's not like somebody can steal it from me. I guess everybody gets their own copy of it or whatever, which is pretty nice. That's really one thing the first Guild Wars did well. This will be controlling costs and things like that. I was really had a lot of respect for the way that, that system worked. Eat my and dust! Although it was very a very small system this time around, they've really, you know, expanded it into a much more a larger persistent world this time. But they're still applying the same concepts to all of the mechanics in this game. I was in an overflow server, so now I'm going to come into the real one. different things. I don't necessarily have to be playing it this way. You know, I could have went bomb kit, which is probably similar, but could have went full-blown turrets or something like that. Um, and I experimented a little bit with those, but this is really... this particular way fits my playstyle really well, so I'm looking forward to seeing what skills I can get later down the road to, you know, really build upon this. It's going to be it for this video. It wasn't very structured or anything, so I apologize for that. But I just wanted to give you guys a rundown of what I've been doing in game, what I think about it so far. I love it. I'm uh, going to be playing it a lot. Although I have to go to Seattle this week for three days, so I won't get to play very much. But uh, <laughs> when I get back, I'll be going crazy on it again. And keep an eye out for the live streams and all the good stuff that is yet to come. Thanks. Appreciate it, guys.